Dear fellows, welcome to IT Knowledge Base. In this lecture, we will talk about Secure Shell Protocol, also known as SSH, which is a cryptographic network communication protocol that permits secure communication and data exchange between two devices over an unsecured network. The Secure Shell SSH is still the de facto way of connecting to remote Linux servers and various network devices. Rather than losing importance, its uses have increased with the greater reliance on automation technologies such as Ansible, cPanel, WHM, Kubernetes and Docker containerization, etc. Suppose your development team stands up a new web server in their test environment and neglects to open ports 80 and 443 in the server firewall. The team contacts you asking you to troubleshoot the problem. You could use SSH to remote into the web server. You make the connection, enter the password when prompted and complete the firewall configuration. It's quick, easy and secure. But the question arises here, is there a much safer and most secure way to connect to your Linux boxes with the highest encryption possible without typing your secret password into your SSH server? This video lecture covers implementing and using key-based authentication to support easier SSH authentication and improve automation. SSH authentication methods are likely topics for Comptia Linux Plus and Comptia Security Plus exams. Use the video lecture with two or more Linux-based virtual machines in your home lab. Another good way to familiarize yourself with key-based authentication is to use it when connecting to a Raspberry Pi computer. These devices are a great way to get started with Linux. Before we jump into our main focused area, we must have to ensure basic prerequisites should be formed. For example, you should verify your Linux system is updated and upgraded for bug fixes. And SSH service is primarily installed in your Linux server with an auto start service upon every reboot. In this demo, I am using the latest Ubuntu server 22.10, which is hosting our corporate web server. And here I would like to install the open SSH server service for remote administration and ongoing server maintenance in the near future. Along with that, I have another Ubuntu desktop 22.4 Linux box as an SSH client for testing and validation purposes. Before we begin the installation of the open SSH server, open up your Linux server terminal or by pressing Ctrl Alt T if you are in the GUI and confirm that your system is up to date. My system is upgraded already, so it's not going to upgrade it again. If you are not willing to upgrade due to time constraints, then just a simple update is fine to fetch the packages from the repository for the sake of this demonstration. This might take a few minutes depending on the availability of updates and upgrades of necessary packages. Still OpenSSH is not present on the system by default. Therefore, run this command to initiate the OpenSSH installation procedure on your Linux box. You can also install OpenSSH server during the installation wizard as the Ubuntu server offers the same. We have successfully installed OpenSSH on your Linux box. After successful installation of OpenSSH, you need to enable it and auto start after you reboot your Linux box by utilizing the following command. Next, validate that the OpenSSH is working properly and there are no issues with the help of the following systemctl command. As you can see from the output, OpenSSH is currently active and running on our Linux system. Now OpenSSH server is up and running. You can initiate the netstat tag antp command to check if the SSH port is in listening mode and active. Now let's jump over to our Ubuntu desktop client VM and attempt to connect the SSH server with the standard style of SSH client authentication method. The standard syntax for SSH includes the SSH command, hit the spacebar, type the name of the user connecting as, place at the read, and the destination device name or IP address. Type yes to accept the fingerprint 
Enter the password to prove that you are authenticated user. You are now connected to the system and may either make changes based on your current identity or use sudo to elevate your privileges. Now back to our main topic and see how easy it is to set up key based authentication almost in every Linux box. So what is the SSH key based authentication? Key based authentication replaces the what you know which means a password portion of the SSH authentication challenge by using a public and private key pair. This is asymmetric encryption uniquely identifies the user. Perhaps more importantly at least in the case of automation it does not require the manual entry of a password. SSH passes the authentication key automatically assuming the remote system accepts the key and the authentication is immediate and silent. Before enabling the SSH key based authentication and disabling password based authentication you should have to understand their basics and then configure it properly. So how do we set it up? It's a very straightforward process but has some intricacies that you really need to understand first. Here is one caveat for you all. If you have multiple or separate login accounts that really need an SSH key based authentication or if you really need a separate SSH key based logins then their login account should exist in the SSH server foremost. If not then you have to create it first and you should have their login details on your hand or contact your server administrator so they can create your login accounts on the server then you will easily follow the upcoming implementation steps in accordance because every single user account has to generate its own SSH key pair from its own account and then copy it to the SSH server. Implementation steps Implementing key based authentication is straightforward and consists of three steps. Number one, generate a key pair on the SSH client. Number two, copy the public key to the remote SSH server. Number three, test the authentication. You may also edit the SSHD config file to require key based authentication on your remote systems. Let's practically cover all the steps with additional details on these three implementation steps. First, we have to generate a key pair. A public private key pair is a mathematically related set of keys that can uniquely identify a user or computer. The Linux SSH keygen command generates the keys depending on your organization's security requirements. You can use the tag T option to generate various types of keys. Choices include RSA, DSA, and ECDSA. Use the following command to generate the key pair on the client computer from which you will connect to remote devices. It's now going to ask where to save these keys files. The default location is fine and simply press enter. The key generation utility offers you the chance to set a passphrase. Press enter twice to skip the prompt. You probably don't want to set a passphrase especially if you are using SSH in the context of automation. Now switch to SSH directory. Type cd tilde forward slash dot ssh you will see id underscore rsa file this is a private key and id underscore rsa dot pub this is a public key key names may vary depending on the encryption method selected use cat id underscore rsa dot public key Scroll to the bottom of the file and observe the username. Remember this is a user the remote system recognizes. Next step is copy the public key to your remote SSH server. The key pair now resides on your client computer. This is probably the computer on your desk that you use to remotely connect to the various devices you are responsible for it. The next step is to copy the public key to the remote system. Linux has a specific command for this task too. The command is ssh-copy-id for example to copy the key to your remote server and the remote server IP is 192.168.11.133 and the username is nmam. Type same like this. User nmam at the rate remote server IP address or device name. Then hit enter. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Press yes to accept the fingerprint. The remote system prompts you for a password. Type the password for the user account you are using to connect to the destination server. If all goes well, this is the last time you must enter this password. 
you could check the remote system of the users to which you are copying the public key file in the .ssh folder and find the public key. Now test the authentication. Testing the new authentication method is as uh, simple as establishing a SSH connection. Type the usual SSH command as we were typing in the standard connecting procedure and observe that the remote system does not challenge you or ask for a password. Now you should be able to connect with the asymmetric encryption that uniquely identifies the user and now you are simply connected. No password challenge for a key based SSH connection. The SSH connection passed the public key in the background proving your identity. The obvious benefit is the ease of connection. It's handy to no longer be challenged for a password. In the context of automation, however, key based authentication frees administrators from having to enter or attempt to secure passwords in the file. Automation tools can connect using SSH without an administrator being present and fulfill their tasks. It is difficult to overstate this function's importance in today's world of automation. Now jump over to your remote SSH server to enforce key-based authentication and disable password-based authentication. Key-based authentication for SSH certainly improves your organization's security posture. To enforce this method, update the sshd underscore config file on the remote servers to require key-based authentication and refuse password-based connection attempts. Open the etc ssh ssg underscore config file. Find the stanza that reads public key authentication and edit it to yes. Find the stanza for password authentication and set it to no. Save the file. While you are at it, consider other SSH security best practices such as whitelisting users and refusing remote connections by the root account. The following entries may be useful in the better securing your SSH connections. Be sure to understand that test these before implementing them in a production environment. A mistake can halt remote connections to the server. Final thought, keep practicing. SSH key based authentication is critical for today's remote administration and automation tasks. Take a few minutes to inventory the Linux servers and network devices you routinely connect to over SSH and then create a key pair. Copy the public key to these systems. I also encourage you to configure these destination devices to require SSH keys for authentication and to refuse password based attempts. If you are preparing for certification exams like CompTIA Linux Plus, CompTIA Security Plus or CompTIA Cyber Security Analyst, be sure you can identify the components and commands related to key based authentication. Work through these steps in your home lab environment until they are second nature. Alright, that's all for the now. I am hoping you have found this video informative. Thank you for being here. I will see you in my upcoming future tech video content. I look forward to join you through this lecture. If you want to see more awesome training content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Click it so you don't miss it. Thank you.